What's going on? Here we are this week with another episode. Let's just jump straight into it. This is Blink Twice. Let's talk about it. Wow, this movie. So much has been made about this picture for a couple of different reasons. Number one, probably the biggest reason is that the film's director and co-writer is none other than Zoe Kravitz, who is a uh, all around extraordinaire. She, we know she's a good actor. She brings it in everything she does. There is no reason going into this picture that she wouldn't do the same in the director's chair. The other thing that people are probably talking about or may have at least thought about is that this film stars Chang Tatum who, if you've seen Deadpool and Wolverine, much has been made of his appearance in that film. And if you know anything about the history behind that movie, what a big deal that that is. He is now in this movie. And that's something that I'm sure people are going to be talking about. So, <laughs> or that's likely something people have been talking about. Beyond that, you might not have heard anyone talk about it too much unless they've seen the movie. So I'll preface this conversation with the idea that I, I, I knew nothing about this movie. I knew of it. I'd seen a poster here and there. I've seen a blip of an ad maybe that I didn't really watch. So I knew it was out there. But as far as premise, the structure, anything like that, I knew nothing about the movie. And I'm glad I didn't, because my experience was much better for not knowing the details uh, or any details really about it. I saw a poster and Channing Tatum had a Polaroid camera and he was taking a picture. That's all I really knew about it. Didn't know anything else. At this point, you may have already seen the movie, but if you haven't and you don't know what it's about, let me try to explain it, the premise anyway. So the movie follows a character by the name of Frida, and she is a server, a cocktail server. Naomi Ackle plays Frida, and she, who you may have seen, if you remember, if you've seen The Rise of Skywalker, she's in that movie. That's what I know her from. And I thought she was decent in that movie. It's just a shame that movie didn't really give her a ton of things to do. But here... She has a tremendous amount to do. She has tremendous agency, and th- that's cool. So she's a cocktail server. She finds herself at this party uh, that's in honor of a tech mogul by the name of Slater King, played by Channing Tatum. This is sort of his comeback after having been canceled. He'd been away for a year after what's alluded to be a sort of sexual sexual harassment or something of that nature, which resulted in his cancellation. And um, it's alluded that Frida may have been involved in that, may have had something to do with that. It's not clear, but that's not the point. She works at this, she's working at this function with her best friend, Jess. And it's a fancy function. There's a lot of rich people there. A lot of people, you know, having fancy food and different things. One thing leads to another, and she ends up talking to Slater King. They have this amazing evening. And by the end of it, she's invited, along with Jess, to go on a you know, vacation for a few days at a private island, which Slater King owns. So the two of them and a bunch of other people around their age, you know, uh, go to just enjoy themselves for a few days. And while you're there, you find yourself getting caught in the trance, the allure of this of this place. And then you, you start to suspect that things aren't what they seem. So that's the premise of the film in a nutshell. But now I'll get into my experience of the movie. 
So I have been reading and just, I knew what I thought about the movie, but I was just curious to hear what other people thought, other people who I respect, other reviewers, reading other articles, just things I'm curious about other people's thoughts. And I'd like to find a wide range of, of opinions because it's always interesting to see what people think and that, that not everybody agrees on a movie. You could have seen the same movie and have differing opinions on the film or different reasons why you liked or didn't like a movie. And that's always so interesting to me. I think that would be really boring if we all agreed on on things. If we all liked everything or if we all hated everything, one type of thinking is not very fantastic. It's not very interesting. It's nice, nice to hear different perspectives. And one of the things that came up was that there, for certain screenings, there was a disclaimer about the content of the movie. Uh, let me say off the top, there is, it is disturbing in, in certain parts. Uh, there's disclaimer notes that and mentions different situations and things that the film might contain or does contain. And my showing didn't have that disclaimer. And I, I and honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm glad about that. And I'll tell you why I understand there's, there's sensitivities to uh, trauma traumatic situations and things of that nature. As a sensitive person myself, I can recognize that. I recognize the benefit of a disclaimer. However, and I'm I'm conflicted about this. You can tell me if I'm crazy or not. As a creative spirit, (laughs) and as someone who appreciates creativity and the arts, there's something about the the idea of of a disclaimer for this movie, uh, give telegraphing certain things about the movie, like telling you the the situations you'll experience, and in a way that some part of that feels like it takes away the movie's claws, uh, or teeth. You know, no pun intended. I know Zoe Kravitz played Catwoman, but I, and this is her movie that has. Make no mistake, this movie has claws. It has some edge. It has some bite to it. A disclaimer for me, I think, just in retrospect, might have sort of dulled the the sharp edges of this movie for me uh, because it's not the... I, I am of the opinion that it's not the, the job of the art to coddle to my sensitivities. <laughs> like the art's job, it's, you're supposed to feel something. You're supposed to feel something. And... I definitely felt things <laughs> watching this movie. I felt disturbed, I, but I also felt some warm fuzzies. I felt entertained. Um, I I felt a range of things. And I think good art ends up doing that. I think to you never walk into in an art exhibit in a museum. Uh, you might There might be some. I've never walked into one where there was a disclaimer above this, per, this artist's exhibit that says hey what you're going to see here is a series of disturbing images images of like things that might make you feel uncomfortable just be ready for that before you come in i'm sure there are some probably some places out there i i again i haven't seen that and i think it's a good thing for me i i appreciate when i can walk into something and feel whatever i feel and i have to sort of negotiate that that was the case with this movie there was no disclaimer I knew nothing about the movie and I think having seen it and felt disturbed and felt the, the shock felt the, the little moments of, of hope and positivity and also felt the, the fire, uh, it was that made the movie that much great, greater for me. This is a, this is a good movie for a first film. Zoe Kravitz, made a a competent movie she this is a technically well-made movie it's well acted it's it's well written and i think it's well shot too there's there are a lot of great evocative shots in this movie that i really i really dug i really liked how shots were composed Uh, i mentioned early earlier in this video about getting sucked into the the allure, the sort of spell of this movie. There are shots that reflect that. There are some close-ups of of the characters, certain characters in conversation where you're, they're very, very tight spaces, very close, where they're in focus, but everything else around them is not. 
and particularly between Channing Tatum and Naomi Aki's character, they they have many scenes in the movie where they're where they're talking really closely, and you can tell there's there's chemistry there. They're digging each other, and as the audience member, you you feel that you almost get pulled into how they're looking dreamily, lovingly, almost like they're getting lost in the allure of each other. And it's kind of interesting to be the third party in that, witnessing that. You're almost falling into that with them. You're falling in love with with what you're seeing in between them. It's it's so interesting. And the, the, there are a lot of shots that reflect this, this uh, trance-like state you're almost in. And oddly, you know, being on the island... And being on the vacation that they're, that all the characters are on, there is this sort of trance-like experience that they're having, which contributes to the the darker, sort of more unsettling elements of of the movie that you may not be a, a, aware of. You know, you have a feeling if you you've seen a movie like this before, and where everything feels positive on the surface, feels great. It's great. What could go wrong? There's no tension to speak of. On the surface, anyway. On the surface, anyway. But you know somewhere that something's going to happen. Otherwise, what the heck is the point of the movie? Why are we watching this movie? <laughs> and I, this movie is no different in that respect. What it does do that is different is the way it presents that. And the way it does it, I think, which is so unique in a way that I, I hadn't seen in a recent movie. I'm sure other films have done something like this, which is when how things are revealed. It's not chronological. Everything is great until you start seeing cracks. And the way the film reveals it is actually ingenious a little bit because you see it in flashes, like little bits of things that may not be cool, that don't feel right. But you, you're not putting them together yet until they come together. And then it's, it, it, and when it does, it, it, it really is, it makes an, an impact. It's not like a, I've heard this movie being compared to Get Out and Stepper Wives and things like that, where where for those movies, it's it's a gradual, again, something is not right <laughs> with the place we find our hero in. But gradually, things begin to get more and more unsettling and to the point to where it's just, it's outlandish and really extreme. And now there is no hiding the the wackiness and your hero is trying to find a way out of the situation they find themselves in. And in similarly, this film is similar. I wouldn't say exactly the same because the way Zoe Kravitz crafts tension in this film, I would almost say it's much more, it almost feels boring <laughs> in a way that the way the film builds the first third of the movie first act and into the second act it's it's it feels slow but this is actually a good thing because you start wondering oh well where's the tension where's the conflict but if you're paying attention you you'll see little things that you make mental notes of and in much the same way you might see in step with wives or get out or films like that you see little things that that make your spider senses go off and they tip you off to something that could happen. In this movie, there are those little things, but they're spaced out further. So I almost feel like there's something that's even genius, more genius about it feeling slower than, than not, because you're, it makes you get, you're get caught, you're caught off guard when, when stuff does happen, when stuff starts revealing itself to like, Oh, it's like, oh, it's a, it's a massive, rug pull because the little hints you get are spaced out so far you forget a little bit even though in the back of your mind you're thinking oh there's probably some things that are kind of whack about this place there's probably some crazy stuff going on, about to happen <laughs> but you're not as you're more at ease a little bit i think than than you would be in a different film depending on who you are you might already be off put because you're these people are on an island somewhere so already there's like this like you're remote you're away you can't use your phones, like you can't call for help if you need to, like you're, th there's immediate problems with that. <laughs> but I think the slowness of the movie is, is a strength and it feels deliberately built to when it starts ramping up, then you're 
you're really like, oh, okay, you have to like catch your bearings and stuff. <laughs> and it's a good thing for the sort of thriller sensibilities of this of the story. Uh, acting, Naomi Ackle was fantastic. That's Frida. I, again, I, I, this is my first time seeing her in a lead role, and she does wonderful work. Such nuanced work. She's such so full. She plays a, such a rich performance, and she feels like a real flesh and but blood situation. <laughs> and it's it's great to see. Yeah, she she has such presence. And um, yeah, I hope to see more lead performances for her in the future. I think also I I really liked Aaliyah Shawkat. She was great as Jess. In fact, one of my favorite things about the movie is their relationship, Frida and Jess's relationship. There's little things that they do that they do for each other that really show how much they love each other. It's a beautiful um, relationship between two 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 best friends, and I just I I I would like to see more movies like that that really show genuine relationships between two women. It was just it reminds me in a way oddly of Booksmart which is a weird, <laughs> weird thought to, that, that comes up. But then that was another situation where you had two female characters with a, with a, with a rich dynamic, another beautiful relationship. Um, yes, I, I liked Leah Shawkat. She was great in this movie too. But I think the standout to me is uh, easily Channing Tatum. This is not a role that I've seen him in before. And I think... Most people will probably say the same thing. You have never seen Channing Tatum in a role like quite like this, and it, it's almost like I was having this conversation recently about when you cast certain actors that are known for certain types of roles. When you cast them in other roles, that is like you've done like ninety percent of the job <laughs> because ninety it's ninety percent of a different job being done that. This character who we think is going to be something else, we're surprised when we see that this character is something other than what we thought. <laughs> and, it, and, and it works even better when the actor can pull it off. I think Slater King is one of the more dynamic performances that I've seen from Channing Tatum and anything that I've seen him in. It might be my favorite performance from him. I I don't I don't know. I I don't know. I liked him look I, I liked him in another movie, comic book based movie. I don't want to ruin it if you haven't seen it. Um but it came out this year. You might you probably already know what it is, but I really did enjoy him in that. But I, I this is probably the one of the more richer performances I've seen from him. He's playing a lot of different he's playing a few different shades. And it's it's really cool to see. The other thing I really liked was th that Jeannie Davis was in this movie. I haven't seen Jeannie Davis in a movie in, in a while. And and I think she's great. She has a great she has great presence. And ah, oh, just I just loved her. Again, the other thing, this movie has this movie has a lot of people that are like, you know, not like ticky tack actors. You have Haley Joel Osment and Christian Slater. What? Like what the <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is going on? like yeah it's 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 kind of wild that it has as many people as it does oh Kyle Mc, Kyle McLaughlin uh you know the original Paul Atreides from the 1984 Dune like it's a it's kind of wild when you think about <laughs> about all the the people this, that Zoe Kravitz and, and her and her team was able to amass for this movie my problems with the movie I bring my my biggest problem I think my biggest issue that I'm not still I'm still totally not, totally not not sure about it is the um is the the last third or really the like the very the, the resolution of the movie when the film resolves itself that's the, the I felt like you had a pretty good run with the movie and then the film resolves and then I I'm left questioning what the heck is going on? <laughs> Not in a way that it's like a, I don't get it. I understand it because also it's it's a it's a not a it's not a expected way to resolve. And I think the film automatically gets extra points for that because it's, it it does something different. It dares to do something different with how it 
how it closes things up. So I appreciate it for that. And it's risky, just like the rest of the movie. There's a fair amount of risk in this movie. <laughs> and um, uh, that's the, the only thing I think I would be, I would be like, oh, what, what? Like, again, it's, I, I, I don't knock it for that. I just, it's, it's not what I expected. And like with any art, you, you have to sit with what comes up for you. And that's, that's what I've done. I, I, I saw it yesterday, whatever it is. And so I'm still ruminating on it, but that would be probably the biggest issue I think that came up for me. All in all, this is a good movie. This movie is, is an example of Zoe Kravitz's talent as a director, but also her ability to allow other team members to do their work expertly. The set design on this movie is great. It perfectly reflects what a place like that would look like on a fancy island somewhere. The costume design is really nice. The like I mentioned, the cinematography is great, and I think the writing is also sound too. Zoe Kravitz is a writer. And I don't know who, how, how much between her and a co-writer, who did what in the script or whatever it is, and how much that was. How, you know what that looked like in the during the process but i think for the most part however heavy-handed certain parts of the script are for the most part it's pretty sound i think it's structurally sound it has good bones it's good foundation and the execution it, again is uh, um i think it works there are a couple places where it could have been more uh subtle to, to, for my tastes but at the end of the day uh, it works. So you're probably going to hear a lot of varying opinions on this movie. <laughs> I've heard people talk about how much they appreciate the film, how much they love it. And some people who outright hated it and talked about this movie as the worst film of 2024 so far. I, I, I don't know if I'd say that, but because, you know, obviously I, I liked it. So, um, but, you know, I would encourage you to check this movie out if you haven't seen it, because it's a darn good entry, and it actually just goes to show, I think, that Zoe Kravitz knew, she had a very clear grasp on what she wanted to say, and the movie doesn't feel preachy either. Like, she's she she's made this movie with a very clear idea of what she wanted, and I think for the most part that, I, you know, from what I can see, I don't know everything, all the nuances that were in her head when she was crafting this film, but what's on display is something she should be proud of, I think. And I would encourage you to, to check it out. It's not going to be for everybody, for sure. It's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. And that's cool. But if you're wondering what it what it's like and you want to form your own opinion about it, you might check it out and see what you think. That's going to be it. Thank you for sticking around, hanging out with me for a little bit. I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Take it easy.